Welcome to Phone News Day with Kevin Clark. I am Kevin Clark. <laughs> Why didn't the Astros just say they were filming a documentary? I don't understand. Could I wrap this whole thing up in a week? Above the fold, Green Bay Packers, Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is in the NFC Championship game. Congratulations to the Green Bay Packers. If you were to walk down the street and someone said, hey, uh, why is the why the Packers in the NFC Championship game? You would hear the name Aaron Rodgers first. He is one of the most talented passers of the decade, probably one of the most talented passers in the history of the sport. And he is normally the reason for Green Bay Packers' success. On Sunday, this was no different. Six for six, 145 yards, two touchdowns on throws over 10 yards in the air. Zero incompletions. It was, according to Pro Football Focus, his highest graded game since the Super Bowl that he won in 2011. That's a nice playoff performance from Mr. Aaron Rodgers. But the reason the Packers are here is not just Aaron Rodgers or not just Devontae Adams. It's because of how they built their team and the fact that they don't actually need Aaron Rodgers to be this great all the time. Aaron Rodgers for the past three years has had a passer rating under 100. This is still really good and still better than most quarterbacks. But in 2011, his quarterback rating was 122. He had at one point a 9% touchdown rating. It's been over 7% three times in his career. This year, it's 4.6. So Aaron Rodgers is not the elite, elite, elite quarterback that he was eight, nine, six years ago. But what he is, is a good quarterback that the Packers, from a team building perspective, have used as a bit of a luxury item. Now, let me explain. The Packers have Devontae Adams, they have a good offensive line. They have used Aaron Jones effectively. On defense, they went out and won free agency by getting Zedaria Smith and Preston Smith. They drafted Kenny Clark a few years ago. They have the type of team that pressured Russell Wilson 25 times on Sunday. They have the type of team that has Zedaria Smith who led the NFL in pressures this year. That was an unbelievable signing. If you're relying on your quarterback to be great all the time, you will fail. Look at Deshaun Watson. Look at the Seattle Seahawks with Russell Wilson. They build their team around apparently the notion that, well, we'll just do whatever and our quarterback will bail us out. That's not how you win Super Bowls. That's not how you get to championship games. That is how you have a weird, bad, stilted playoff run in which you fail because your quarterback couldn't do it all. Nice job, Matt LaFleur. Nice job, GM Brian Gutenkunst. Nice job, Green Bay Packers. I like the Packers. Uh, they're gonna lose this weekend, but I like them. My wife and I went to a Chargers game last year and they're playing the Browns and about halfway through the first quarter, she looks at me and she says, does this game count? <laughs> <laughs> James Vanderbeek, actor. What's going on? Pose, Packer fan. Yeah. You are from New England, but you're mm -hmm. a Packer fan. I am. You I are am. A, a noted Patriot hater. I am a noted Patriot. I hated that the Patriots tried to, tried to you know, patronize us in Connecticut by saying they're New England Patriots. We didn't have a football team. So you decided to go with the team in the Midwest, the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, I, I, didn't, my, I didn't really, my dad liked the Giants and I didn't really like the Giants. There was no reason to root for the Jets when I was a kid. Oh, as opposed to now. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw this this crazy dude from Mississippi yep. firing the ball with every inch of his body, and I was like, that's my guy. And the hating the Patriots thing has only come back to bite me in the ass like five, six Super Six Bowls times now. every single year for so the past I, 20 years. I'm still sticking with it. I do love Boston, though. They're, it's a great city. Boston. What a town. Boston. We, had a, we had a big debate last week with Mina Kimes from ESPN. She said Chicago is a better city than Boston, and I'm completely out on that. Boston is a much better city. I don't know, city. man. Boston's got character. Boston stage a revolution. Yeah, what did Chicago do? Ferris Bueller? <laughs> <laughs> Mitch Trubisky? They have Mitch Trubisky? <laughs> American Revolution or Mitch Trubisky? What's going to happen on Sunday? NFC Championship game, going yeah. into Santa Clara. That's, that's tough. You know, I think we're going to learn from the last time we lost to the 49ers. By a million points. You're going to lose by less think, than a million points. I think points. we're going to learn from the last time we couldn't do anything on offense or defense. <laughs> we're gonna, we know their weak spots. It's, it's, it's called a rope-a-dope. Yeah, so what are the weak spots? I'm sure they'd love to know. There are weak spots in the 49ers? Mm -hmm. Well, I can't tell you. Oh yeah, the game you and Aaron and yet. Matt yeah, talked yeah, about yeah, it I earlier can't. this week. If I, I gotta be loyal to my team if yeah. I told you. Yeah, you were in the meetings earlier this week. Jimmy G would be like, yo, I just saw Vanderbeek in the ringer. <laughs> we gotta patch that up. So Mike McCarthy's going to Dallas. Yay. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. I was going to say. What did you learn about Texas football having done the most famous Texas football movie of all time? Oh, thank you. So when I first got the script to Varsity Blues, I looked at stuff and I was like, well, this is over the top. This doesn't really happen. And then we went to Texas and they were like, oh, yeah. yeah. This is, this is Could actually, you jazz it up a little bit? This is actually a little tame. Yeah. I was like, really? They put billboards of players on their front lawn. They're like, oh, yeah, that's kind of a basic billboard. They're usually bigger. <laughs> it's like, wow. Let's talk about this tweet you had here. About oh no. A very controversial yard marker take you have about the snow. Oh yeah. Oh, I'll stand by that one. It's snow. I don't need to see every single yard marker. If the players can't see them, why do I need to see them? You can, and also, by the way, you've already superimposed the yellow line. It's really all I need to know. I don't need to know that it's the 22 yard line. And, also, and literally the technology sucked because they the, it bled through the players and you're like, I want to see him play in snow, man. How have we not figured out how to put like a chip on the ball? Yeah, that's the crazy thing. And, and know when it's crossed the goal line. If they did that, however, the Packers may not have gotten a first down with Jimmy Graham last weekend and the game might have gone different. No, he got a first down. He got a first down, okay. <laughs> Give me my phone, I'm tweeting that to the NFL now. <laughs> Dear we'll NFL, get, we'll get good please put a chip inside yeah. the ball. Have some cheese if you'd like. Cheese? I'm Grapes, good. cheese. That's, that's awfully appetizing. No one, no one ever, no one ever I'm, eats I'm the Starbucks gonna, I'm thing. Gonna, I'm gonna pass. We're gonna do horoscopes. James, what's your birthday? My birthday's March eighth. You're a Pisces. I am. Your lifestyle is, <laughs> your lifestyle is a coping method. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see what Amy has to say. And, about my birthday. And, and a way of managing the complexities of society. What about it is working? What isn't? First of all, open-ended. Horoscopes that, are awful. That, that sounds like there's some attitude in that question. Yeah. What about it is working? Are you ex rejecting or accepting this? I, I reject all general horoscopes. Should we do Club Kevin? Yeah. We're gonna go through the newspaper and we're gonna find the person we think has crushed it. Okay. For instance, Queen Elizabeth would be a candidate, a very good candidate. I'm gonna go with Harry. Harry? I'm gonna go with Harry crushed it. Okay. That dude was born in basically a prison. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. This dude never had any choice about where he was gonna live, what he was gonna do, who he was gonna marry, and somehow mm -hmm. he has managed to marry who he wanted, okay. and now he gets to do what he wants to do. I mean, and I would assume people are kind of loving him for it. Not that it matters. He does like, have to get a job. Well, yeah. But we all have to get a job. <laughs> he was gonna have a taxpayer-funded lifestyle. Ah, oh, that's like a gilded cage, man. Those are velvet handcuffs. You wanna, you wanna wake up in an old castle every day and tell your wife, honey, we're working. Really, we are. <laughs> and then she's gonna look at you. She's an American who grew up working, made it in the, in the entertainment industry, in an industry that has a very, very small rate of success. She beat the odds. And she's gonna turn to you and go, I'm proud of how hard you're working, honey. <laughs> you make a very good point. And that's why Harry, no longer Prince Harry, is in Club Kevin. <laughs> Boom. Oh, the, oh, someone tweeted at us there was a tortoise who had so much sex that he saved a species. <laughs> <laughs> but Harry, Harry knocked him out. <laughs> do, you think, do you think there was any altruism in that turtle? Or was that turtle he just... He was sent there to do that. He was sent there, he, was, he had a job to do. He had a job to do? Yeah, like Harry, he had to work. And, uh, and he did it. <laughs> All right, I'll give it to the turtle. No, we're giving it to Harry. Okay, but oh, now I'm just gonna follow this yeah. thread. If those turtles mate, it's a thankless job. <laughs> the turtle's like, a lot of critics. I just knocked him up. Whatever they do after that. James Vanderbeek, thank you so much for coming. Thank you very much.